Good afternoon. Um, my name is Michael Fagelson. I'm the executive director of the Bernard Van Leer Foundation. I have the honor of moderating today's event. Uh, it's called Children's Participation and the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. It's hosted by the governments of, of Chile, Finland, UNDP, and UNICEF. And we have a wonderful opportunity not just to talk about children and youth participation, but to hear about how it's being done in practice. And when we talk about children and youth participation, we talk about a process that begins very early. Uh, babies and toddlers learning to trust, learning to work in teams, learning to negotiate. I have a three and a half year old daughter at home and we learn a lot about negotiation, both of us every day. Moving into the older ages when this awareness of participation in democracy inspires action. We have my colleague Aska Deline who's going to tell us about that in terms of her first-hand experience and becoming youth and engaged and responsible adults. It's a key part of the 2030 agenda today. Somebody shared with me what I thought was a beautiful phrase from the 2030 document that it should be a platform to help channel their infinite capacities for activism into the creation of a better world. Uh, their infinite capacities for activism into the creation of a better world, a truly noble goal. But what's most exciting for me about today is to hear how this is being done in practice in uh, both in Chile and in Finland to governments that have shown leadership not just on this but on children's issues writ large. I was also asked to say at the outset, it's a 75 minute event. Uh, we need to end on time. Um, so please stick to the allotted time so that everybody can have their chance to, to speak. So with that, I want to introduce uh, the Honorable President of Chile, Ms. Michelle Bachelet, a personal hero for everything you've done on early childhood development and children in general to present her opening remarks. Thank you, Michael. And I also want to um, read here my friend, Ms. Taria Halonen, former president of Finland. Uh, also dear friends, uh, Elena Chacon, vice president of Costa Rica. Uh, Ms. Uh, Ula Törne, minister of, uh, for development cooperation in Denmark. She's a little bit late, but she's coming. Um, Ms. Uh, Tone Heskogen, deputy minister of foreign affairs of Norway. Uh, Justin Forsyth, the deputy, uh, said, the Director of Partnership with UNICEF, Jessica Faleta, ASG and, uh, for the region uh, on Latin America from UNDP. Of course, our dear Aska Daline, who is here with us representing the girls and the youth. Uh, for us, this is a very important event because we are convinced that the 2030 Agenda for the Sustainable Development and its uh, 17 uh, SDGs is a while worldwide efforts to reorient the development of all countries towards a new paradigm that puts life, all lives, at the heart of our concerns. And of course it is a hard task, one that must overcome so many obstacles and forces that stand in its way. It must appeal to goodwill, but also be decisive in changing our course towards a more sustainable world. The recognition of human rights as universal means that no one should be left behind in the achievement of the 17 SDGs. It is also recognition of the dignity and rights of every person and imposes an obligation on all states and the international community to guarantee them. It is in this context that our government has placed special emphasis on the commitment to children through a substantive agenda for change. A new deal regarding boys and girls, one between society and the state. We understand there will be no fulfillment of the 169 goals if we do not actively integrate children and adolescents into a process that informs and involves them so they can make their own judgment about the challenges of the SDGs. And this is especially true since they are already carrying out multiple actions to protect the environment, fight against injustice, and promote a better world that resonates in their homes, schools, and neighborhoods. Even more, this generation of boys, girls, and teenagers will become our national and international leaders of the future. So it is crucial that the new paradigm sought by the 2030 Agenda is an intrinsic part of their global view. For this to be possible, we must establish channels of effective participation. 
as we have learned that children are not keen to participate in process of consultation or participation that are not meaningful to them or do not assure that their opinion will be considered. I mean, they don't want to lose time, you know? To ensure that this does not happen, my government, with the help of the UNDP, designated a participatory process for boys, girls, and teenagers that has been as its main theme the 2030 agenda. And this is also very important because until I was president of the Republic, I mean, even when I was a minister, we were not completely aware of the MDGs at that time. So we thought if we really want to fulfill our commitments, we need to involve everyone. We need to involve communities, families, because all of us can do something. The state must do a lot of things, but all of us, the whole society must do more. But in, in terms to be able to ensure that, we needed to first to know, know what it's about and then know what they can do about it. So uh, in July 2017, this project was implemented. We were able to carry out this idea because we already had an effective participatory mechanism for boys and girls promoted by the National Ch Children's Council called Yo Opino Es Mi Derecho. It's my opinion, it's my right. Uh, or, or, or it's my right to make it my point, if I may say. So this initiative was a result of a series of conversations among public agencies, civil society, and boys and girls themselves throughout the country. Their opinions gathered defined those areas relevant for guaranteeing children's rights and guided the council's task. One result was the establishment of a regular participation mechanism for children consistent with the view that they are citizens with rights and what they need is to be heard. So Yo Opino Es Mi Derecho is a deliber de deliberative process in which boys and girls discuss a topic with a specific methodology that allows them to deliver their personal opinion, share them, debate, but then form collective opinions. It is, it is more than a survey or a consultation. It is a tool that teaches the democratic process. And also because we want them when they are adults and, and teenagers to be very active in, in, in the society, in all kinds of issues. So their results have been processed and disseminated to the public, but they also are shared with the participants. So they learn about the opinions of their peers around the country and thus feel part of a community that respects them and consider their opinion. It's the same thing that we did when we made the, our discussions on the country on constitution, a new constitution. People would discuss, would vote what was more important, but then afterwards we would give them back not only what we brought, talked from them, but also the rest of the country discussed about it. So in this case, it may support our schools, including both public and private schools, secular or religious ones, which participated voluntarily. We have also been incorporating the voice of boys and girls in difficult situations, such as those who are homeless, in hospitals, or have disabilities. In order to have an efficient implementation, Yo Opino Mi Derecho requires the building of alliances. In Chile, we work with the National Council for Children, the Ministry of Education, UNDP, in collaboration with UNICEF, and the Organization of Ibero-American States. In, three years, uh, in the three years that this participation mechanism has been in place, almost two million girls, boys, and adolescents have participated, and it has made a difference. In 2015, eight, 80, um, uh, 830,000 participants discussed and proposed priorities contributing to the national policy on children and adolescents. Meanwhile, last year, with close to 425,000 participants, we formulated proposals on how to exercise citizenship and inputs for the citizen training plan of the country schools. This year, up more than a half a million boys and girls know about the 2030 Agenda and SDGs and have expressed their opinion about which are the most significant for their lives and for their community. We have also defined, according to their ages, concrete action proposals, both locally and nationally, and have pledged to collect the results and share them with the 2030 Agenda Interministerial Implementation Council. So our country has set the institutional foundation of a child's right guarantee system that promotes and respects the human rights of all boys and girls living in Chile. We're moving decisively towards a new deal with boys and girls, one whereby their rights are respected and recognized by the state and the society as a whole. And for me as a woman, as a president, but also as a woman, as a pediatrician, it's very important to, to ensure that our children are seen as persons with opinions and, and to respect them. So, I hope this initiative can be of 
useful for many of, the, of you. Maybe you all have your own experiences. And we hope that all together we incentivate others to follow the same path. Thank you so much. Thank you, President Bachelet. I'd now like to um, invite the former president of Finland, the Honorable Ms. Tarja Halonen, to present some opening remarks. And before you do that, just to say how incredible it is to see Chile and Finland here together talking about children. Both countries are so frequently used as a, a lighthouse when people are asking us, what should we do? Uh, both of your countries are examples to, to whom we point. So it's wonderful to have you both here, Ms. Halonen. So thank you very much. Um, I'm really very glad to participate at this uh, side event. So uh, uh, Mr. Bachelet and I, we have been very much together, like a southern and northern sister. Uh, but uh, these are not enough. That's why it's fantastic that excellencies, you all are here. So um, as uh, President Bachelet has brought up, so the SDGs can't be achieved without the inclusion of children and adolescents also emphasizing their role as a critical agency of the change. I have, I'm very happy to notice in many other titles also has been that we are building our future for young youth, but um, not only for, but with and even by them. So um, in Finland, we have had a long tradition to take the, um, uh, into consideration the opinion of the children young ones, but also the children, concerning the family laws and so on. But uh, now uh, we have one big step forward also. In Finland, the current Youth Act came into force in the beginning of this year. So young people are those we consider which are under uh, 29 years of age, including children. The idea of the Act is promote children's and young people's possibilities for social inclusion and the opportunities to have an influence on matters. Promoting non-discrimination and the realization of human rights are very much at the core of it. So I take a few examples to, to you. At the local level, for instance, young people need to have opportunities to participate and exert an influence in youth councils or similar advocacy groups. Of course, we also encourage the young ones to take part in the normal elections, and at the age of 18, they, they can do that, but also those who are under that, that, uh, that age. So children and adolescents have a right to be consulted in matters affecting them. Um, the acts of participation can relate to their role as a citizens in towns, as participating members in schools, that is already the old tradition, kindergartens, hobbies, or the foster care, as a clients in social and health services. So, although the implementation of uh, this provision is an ongoing, pro uh, ongoing work in progress, so we, we have already, of course, uh, uh, many inspiring examples throughout Finland in engaging youth and children. But if I take this the new act, that's how it has worked. So, for example, in Lohja, which is about nine, uh, 60 kilometers from the capital, uh, children and adolescents were participating in the planning of the municipality schools network. In Lahti, uh, a little bit bigger city, the small children have the kindergartens participated in the mapping of the local uh, nature areas. So advancing children's rights through right-based budgeting and carrying out the child rights impact assessment is vital. And um, this is um, in order to secure children's best, uh, best interest um, and to consider potential impacts on them. In these assessments, uh, it is important that children and adolescents own use are taken into account. And I can say that being 20 years a member of our parliament and 10 years a minister of different kind areas, including also the social and welfare, uh, we, we mean always the best for young ones. But sometimes we have a little bit different, slightly different views, and I think that we'll hear more about that. Um, our National Institution for Health and Welfare is encouraging different players towards this path, but uh, we have learned to raise to be modest, so a lot of remains to be done in Finland. We are still in learning curve, 
but uh, I think that we are in good start. And one thing what I think is more or less with um, SDGs important is the follow-up of how we have succeeded. I have been also working with the indicators. Uh, and it might be so that during 50 years we, we see the picture slightly different way, but I think that it's very important to have since the beginning also our indicators in this process, and we have this also concerning the national legislation. Uh, it's not enough that we say that we, we have the will and desire to do it. We have to also to see how we have succeeded. So ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to our joint global agenda, I would like to say a few words about inclusion and health services, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, so you know that both that Michelle and I, we are the members of Every Woman, Every Child Committee, and we try to work on that. And then we, every... And now we're going to be mediators. <laughs> even that now. But uh, in this EVEC, so everybody should take their own area, and I have the human rights. And um, so... One good step forward, I hope you know, have noticed, is that recently I was also co-chair of the high-level working group on the health and human rights of women, children, and adolescents. Um, it was coordinated by uh, World Health Organization and OHCHR. So that was, an, that was an, um, really idea of the human rights approach. In our report, we say that the realization of the sexual and reproductive health and rights are essential. Youth-friendly health services and comprehensive sexuality education, meeting adolescents' viewpoints, prevents unwanted pregnancies, and promotes better adolescents' health. So services should be given for those who the most it needed, not for the grandmothers, okay, or perhaps also for us. So um, additionally, it is wonderful that you from UNICEF and UNDP as major players in the field are together with us here today. Um, for example, UNICEF innovation work for the well-being of children has been important, and we in Finland, we, of course, we give our full support. But it's really important that we coordinate our cooperation more effectively. And then, ladies and gentlemen, last but not least, I would like to bring a message from young people from Finland to all of you today. They are committed to take action for a more sustainable tomorrow. Climate action, responsible consumption, peace and justice, as well as cooperation and partnerships were held as the most important goals. In a project co-hosted by the UN Youth, in Finland, city of Hamarina, and the Children's Foundation for the Year of Our Independence, ITRA, Finnish youth was asked to give commitments about sustainable development. Last week, a delegation also visited New York and UN um, to bring their message forward. What has been learned in the process is that children and young people are aware they must be including in the work towards more sustainable societies. So the only thing what I'm sorry is that we couldn't organize that. You young ones from Chile and Finland could also meet, but the life is not over. <laughs> Let's see in the future. Let me thank once again uh, Mr. Bachelet and the other organizations for this, I'm sure, inspiring event. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. Thank you for your remarks. I heard you say that we always mean the best for children, but sometimes we get it wrong. Before we hand over to the panelists, we're going to watch a video from Chile about Yo Pino, which is an exercise in listening uh, at, a, at a massive scale um, so that we don't get it wrong. And I learned yesterday from Maria Stella, who will speak later, that they don't just listen to the children, they devolve the results of what they hear and they tell them what they can act on and what they can't, which is a wonderful example of participation. So as we start the video, I also wanted to mention if you're tweeting, the hashtag I've been told is Yo Opino, hashtag Yo Opino. Um, can we start the, the video? From the Atacama Desert in the north to Chilean Antarctica in the south, Chile has more than 4 million children and adolescents. 
those living in cities and in rural areas, those with different skills, those belonging to indigenous groups, immigrants, those large and small, all children and adolescents must have their rights guaranteed. Es urgente entonces que nos ocupemos activamente de que haya políticas eficientes y transversales en materia de derechos de infancia y de adolescencia. Poder opinar. To guarantee the right to express opinions and the principle of participation, as set forth in the Convention on the Rights of the Child, the government of Chile created, I give my opinion, it is my right. Porque es un derecho que todos los niños deben tener en escuelas y fuera de las escuelas. A voluntary national program, I give my opinion, represents Chile's answer to the call by the United Nations to comply with the 2030 agenda in transforming the world for sustainable development. During the first I Give My Opinion event held in 2015, the discussion centered on the importance of respecting child and adolescent rights. Yo les diría que ya abran los ojos y que despierten y que vean lo, cómo viven la per, las personas que son más pobres. The results constituted important raw material for building the current national policy for children and adolescents. Pensemos, propongamos, que nadie nos pisotee. Podemos construir un país más justo desde nosotros mismos, desde ahora mismo. In 2016, citizens' rights were discussed. The conclusions from these conversations served to strengthen the national Citizen Responsibility Training Program. Sentir que mi opinión tiene una respuesta. In 2017, I Give My Opinion focused on the 17 Sustainable Development Goals defined and adopted by the 193 member states of the United Nations. Y también hablamos sobre la integración de la mujer y todas esas cosas que van a servir mucho para el futuro y para que sea un país mucho más igual. The results will contribute to the implementation of the 2030 Agenda and to orienting the cooperation between the United Nations organizations and the Chilean government. Si es que el mundo puede llegar a ser una alianza, los demás objetivos deberían ser más fáciles de cumplir. A participation process with an innovative methodology based on the delivery of information, discussion, feedback on the results, and the impact on the development of new laws and public policies. With these components, the foundation has been laid for a new agreement for children and adolescents in Chile. In three consecutive years of events, I Give My Opinion has attained more than two million participations by children and adolescents between four and 18 years of age, and coverage reaching 96% of the national territory. Yo vino mi derecho. I give my opinion, it is my right, is a replicable participatory experience that we now offer to other countries to advance together in building a world that respects, promotes, and guarantees the rights of all children and adolescents. Yo opino, es mi derecho. I give my opinion, it is my right. Now we're going to move into the part of the event to hear from some of the panelists who've been involved in this and similar projects. Um, Ms. Maria Estela Ortiz, the Executive Secretary of the National Council for Children for Chile. Mr. Justin Forsyth, uh, UNICEF Deputy Executive Director for Partnerships. Ms. Jessica Feita, ASG and Regional D Director for Latin America and the Caribbean of UNDP. And a very special guest, uh, Ms. Ascadeline Milanes, the New York City Junior Ambassador. So we want to start with you, Maria Stella, who I understand has been the architect of Yo Opino, to hear uh, how you did it um, and what kind of results you've got so far. Buenas tardes. Agradez Good afternoon. I thank uh, all of you for attending this uh, meeting that is organized by Chile, Finland, UNDP, and UNICEF. 
I also appreciate everyone the, for the opportunity to share a few words with you on the process of boys, girls, and adolescents' participation developed jointly by the Ministry of Education and Social Development, which adding, added the efforts to eradicate violence regardless of its source is key for generating a new deal with children. The President's words underscored the political value to the country of the transformation she is promoting, and I feel very honored to be a part of this process. But I would like to zoom in to the micro, hone in to the micro level by reflect, reflecting briefly on the profound meaning of the recognition of girls, boys, and adolescents as holders of rights, especially as holders of the right to participation. In our view, in this act of recognition lies the key to change, not only political and legal change, but also cultural change that we most aspire to, it, which is a major aspiration of ours. Nothing of what I say will say uh, that I will say regarding human development is new to you, but the strength of the ideological matrix that underlies the invisibility of boys, girls, and adolescents as social subjects often makes us forget what human beings are all about. And um, we are creating a world apart, a suspended world, while they grow into adulthood, which clearly is a figment of uh, the adult centric minds. We both them and we, become what we are through our daily interaction with others. In other words, through certain social processes that uh, take place in our historic community that we belong to. And during our life, uh, and the whole of our lives, uh, this requires our mutual recognition of uh, everyone. And it also requires a form of organization of social life governed by universal moral principles that spell out uh, respect for human dignity the, of each and every one of its members. Under this ethical rule, becoming rights uh, holders is becoming social subjects, active members of a community of belonging. Conversely, the lack of social recognition of children outlines a new concept of violation of rights in terms of abuse, exclusion, and lack of dignity, to which girls, boys, and adolescents are extremely sensitive because these are practices that negate them as persons. Our democracies need to be improved to achieve greater coherence and consistency. We know that democracy is good for children and that children are good for democracy. We also know that only through participation, they will uh, they will par learn par to participate by participating. That is why ensuring these mechanis mechanisms is vital. It allows us not only to respect children's rights, but also to strengthen democracy and reach the sustainable development goals that the world has set forth as part of the 2030 Agenda. The New Deal. It's not achieved merely by formalizing a new legal status for the under-18 population. It must, it must also be embodied in the day-to-day -day practices of their recognition as legitimate members of a community. That is why my opinion is my right makes it possible to consolidate the recognition of children as citizens with a voice, their own opinions, critical judgment, and with the ability to change the world. So here we might uh, think that we are all convinced, but that is not the case. Ensuring the participation of boys, girls, and adolescents is complex because in order to listen, you are required to have an open mind. And these other voices cause tension and demand that the state carry out transformations that it is not always willing to carry out. I recall a 10-year-old boy in a poor community in Santiago, southern Santiago who asked us uh, in 2014 why we only asked him about his school and his community. He also wanted to give his opinion regarding what was happening in the country and to be able to talk to ministers. The need to expand these participatory uh, processes were included in a legislation that is being debated in Congress, it was, uh, which was rejected in the first initiative uh, in a cross-cutting way by all senators. But we will uh, continue insisting on this because it is clear that these conversations and debates at all administrative levels should take place. The outcomes 
or rather, we are convinced that boys and girls should have access to a permanent, voluntary, informed, confidential participation processes that produce results regarding all the issues that affect them. The outcomes of these three years uh, proves it, and, and it is available in the website www.yopinos.cl. I wish to stress a central idea of the experience in 2017 when they discussed and made proposals on the sustainable development goals. Girls, boys, and adolescents have powerful opinions of, on the issues at hand. They are not in their own world, but rather from their worlds, they are making requests and proposing solutions to the problems we, we all share. They talk to us about over, overcoming poverty, decent work, quality education, and the imper imperative need to take care of our planet, using clean energy and sanctioning those who pollute, among other things. For them, these issues are not separate categories. They fully understand that uh, human rights are indivisible and interdependent. Once more, children are teaching us essential things. In closing, I would like to mention three challenges that we are now facing to move towards uh, the genuine participation of girls and boys, understood as a continuous and progressive social and political integration process. First of all, we must build follow-up mechanisms for girls, boys, and adolescents' proposals. This uh, requires strengthening children's associations that can play an active role in the following of the proposals that uh, come from each of the countries. The second challenge is that the principle of participation should become a cross-cutting state policy and not just a government administration's policy. The commitment to the rights of children must be permanent. Uh, finally, we need partnerships among countries and institutions to move steadily with forward without backing up towards the eradication of violence and the and exclusions in the exercise of rights. We must continue promoting efforts like this where we can continue sharing best practices and strengthen global political commitments. Thank you uh, all, and I invite you to join us and continue moving forward together. Thank you. Muchas gracias, Estela. Uh, Thank you, Estela. Uh, you can feel the passion that you have for this uh, project. And uh, behind every good project, there is a powerful engine, which is you. Panelists from UN UNICEF and UNDP um, to ask your opinion not only about the project, and I'm going to start with you, Mr. Forsyth. Why is uh, child participation so important for UNICEF? Thank you very much and um, good afternoon. And it's a great honor to be on the same platform as President Bachelet and former President Hallinan. And thank you for both Chile and Finland's leadership on child participation. It's also um, my sister organization, UNDP, and our youth ambassador, and Maria, thank you for your powerful words. Uh, um, UNICEF um, is very proud to be a partner with Europeano, and I think it's a model example of involving children and listening to them, but also acting on what they say. And one of the initiatives that UNICEF runs globally, um, from countries like Myanmar through to Uganda, but many others, is another type of listening um, project that actually is quite similar to Europeano, but on a global scale. It's called You Report. It has millions and millions of children um, engaged with it, and they give in real time um, on a phone, by text, their views on different questions. And let me just give you two examples that bring alive and answer the, the very specific question. In Liberia, which is one of the places that we do You Report, we asked um, young people and children um, uh, a, a difficult question, and the question was, do you agree that sex, i.e. sex with your teacher, um, influences grades and is a problem in your school? Um, shockingly, 86% of children in schools um, responded um, yes. And that, I mean, even though we and the Liberian government, particularly Ellen Johnson Sirleaf as the president, had focused on violence, in the community as a whole and violence against children spurred 
as a consequence, an initiative by the President on violence, particularly in schools and violence in the wider community against girls and boys, not just girls. I mean, predominantly it was girls, but it was also boys. And also led to a new program called the Gender Equitable Education Program that particularly tried to address this issue around sex for grades, which is one of the most appalling um, misuses of power um, um, and rape of children in schools in, re in return for them being able to, to get on. So that's a very practical example, again, like Europeano, about how listening can lead, lead to action and some, some positive change. A second example that is from a personal experience is I've spent a lot of time working on the migrant and refugee crisis in the Mediterranean. And um, I met a, um, a, a young woman, a girl, um, who had fled from Nigeria through Libya into Italy. I uh, met her at a, a safe um, children's centre in, in, in Sicily. And she told me, like many of the girls I've met over the years, a terrible story of being trafficked, of being locked in an underground prison in Libya for eight months and raped every day for eight months and then sold into a trafficking prostitution gang in, um, by, the, by the smugglers in, in, in Libya into the mafia-run um, 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 prostitution gangs in, in Italy. And she had escaped and she was now safe in this children's center. And her and her friends um, were part of a um, you report on the move for children unaccompanied um, on this terrible route, some of them from West Africa, some of them from Eritrea, some of them from Syria, some of them from other parts of the world. Nine out of ten children on this central Mediterranean route are unaccompanied um, and very vulnerable to traffickers and smugglers. And she had set up this You Report on the Move with us to directly hear from children um, about what they wanted and needed. And this You Report had snowballed so much that it fed into the Italian government's unaccompanied child migrant bill, which had just been passed in Parliament, which looked at particular provisions to protect children on the move. And even more than that, this group had formed a radio station to, to, to broadcast to children, but then had also been asked by the Italian government when they had the G7 in Sicily to help suggest ideas for the G7 community on unaccompanied children on the move. And again, those children, and even that child and young woman who'd been terribly abused felt very empowered by that process of being listened to and then action being taken. Interestingly, what they all told me is, apart from um, the violence, the number one issue they wanted was education. They felt that education was the key to all of their future. So I feel inspired by the young people themselves. I'm, I'm full of admiration for Europeano, for the actions of the Finnish government and many other governments um, who we're going to hear from in a minute and the similar initiatives um, they have taken. I just want to make one final point, if I may. Um, every year we have um, a lot of different UN days, and one of them is Universal Children's Day. And, you know, we get a bit skeptical sometimes about days. But this year and in subsequent years, we want to, and it's on November the 20th, turn this day on its head and make it about children taking action for children, children's participation. And we want children to become president of Chile for the day. We want children to present the news. We want them to take over sport and entertainment. We want to listen to children on that day and, and hear their voices in schools. We want them to take over the lesson, the assembly, to talk about the issues that they care about. But then we also want, as adults, in all the organizations and governments, to not just use it as a fun day to do clever things with children taking over, but to listen and act. And I would really urge you, just as one practical thing from today, join us on World Children's Day with millions of children who are going to take over um, and tell us what they think, and then let's, let's act on, on, on what they do. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Justin, and uh, I think my, my, my three-and-a-half-year-old will be very willing to take you up on your offer, uh, Director of UNICEF, President of Chile. Yeah, you, be, ca be careful. You, 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 she's a tough one. Sorry, I say only one, one thing for you. I'm now running away. It doesn't mean that I'm not interested in, but before that was scheduled, so I have my, my flight 
And um, we have so democratic countries, both USA and Finland, that they don't wait, not even for the former presidents. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, I want to turn to, to Ms. Peta for some observations, and I just want to recall this, this phrase that I cited at the beginning, that the SDGs can be a platform for children and youth to channel their infinite capacities for activism into the creation of a better world. I, I'd really like to hear from you about how the SDGs, in, in your view, can serve uh, that function. Thank you very much, uh, Michael, and uh, thank you very much, uh, President Bachelet, former President Alon, and for, for bringing us together around this issue. And, and of course, uh, it's an honor to be accompanied by uh, Vice President of Costa Rica, the State Secretary of Norway, uh, the Minister of, of Denmark, and, and, uh, and my colleague, uh, uh, the, the Deputy Executive Director of UNICEF, and, and of course, our uh, our friends from Chile who have come and have worked with us. It's, um, w we are uh, very pleased to be able to, to come and, and, and share this experience because it's also, uh, we consider it from UNDP, from the UN at large, a, a best practice, not only because of what it means for participation and for enhancing the, the, the Agenda 2030 and the SDGs, but also because within the UN is, is an interagency practice that we bring together uh, the capacities, the competencies of two agencies of, of the UN uh, to support an initiative led by, by the government. And in, in, this, uh, in, in this sense, we, we are actually very, very privileged to have been able to work on this. Um, the, this agenda call us, of course, uh, pushes us all, the international organizations, the government, the private sector, uh, every person to, to think differently, to enhance uh, the, the, the agenda, and to address the multiple and interlinked uh, development challenges. Uh, we talk about the multidimensionality of the agenda. We talk about the, what it means to leave no one behind, and certainly citizen participation and all elements all components of the citizens is vital to, to strengthen the, the, the SDGs. Uh, for UNDP, governance, the working governance, is a pillar of our work. And uh, in, in that particular, what, what, what we can contribute is to, to bring, to help bring uh, the voice um, and the participation of all actors in development, uh, and certainly to, in, in a way to strengthen democratic governance. Um, so when we talk about leaving no one behind is, is actually bringing all actors of development in, in the development process. And in that sense, uh, absolutely the, the, the voice of, of children, but also the, the voice of all those who don't have a voice that needs to be heard will only um, be true to the, to the sense of leaving no one behind in this agenda. Um, in the, in the early stages of, um, of the formulation of the Agenda 2030, there was a very strong consultation process. And uh, uh, it was young women and, and men that made the strong demands, and, and for that, UNDP was also uh, a lead in making this happen, especially when we heard demands on, on the future they want, on quality of education, on decent work, on more effective and transparent governments on greater participation in the decision making. And their opinions fed into the Agenda 2030. Um, this consultation took place uh, with a very innovative social media, with uh, um, use, the use of technology to, to make it attractive, of course, especially for young people to, to participate. And uh, in that, it was uh, Latin America at large that was one of the most active but in particular, Chile. Chile made a very, uh, a, a very strong effort. And we are particularly pleased that this, this consultation that started as part of the formulation of the agenda, Chile actually undertook this as an initiative to take it to every year since. 
So this consultation process became institutionalized, and that's why we find this um, a particularly important that we highlight the importance of. And it was actually founded on, on we have heard pre President Bachelet on the conviction that children and adolescents must be taken into consideration, um, of course, but when, when discussing sustainable development, not only when, when discussing their own uh, policies or social policies that address them. So, um, and it's actually the, the implementation of, uh, um, of, of these that makes, uh, that, that fulfills what is also an aspiration of this agenda, that human rights is, is at, um, mainstreamed in, in the work of the agenda in, in SDGs. And that is why it's, uh, uh, is, is the importance of this uh, good practice. Um, so I, I think with this we have proven that the, there are innovative and inclusive mechanisms that we can put in place to leave, uh, uh, to leave no one behind. Um, just a, 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 f a final thought that, of course, we, we know that girls and boys, children and youth must be agents of transformation process proposing the Agenda 2030, but especially that influencing the, the future that is built uh, not only for them, but with them. And this is also uh, an important part. Uh, <coughs> more at large, UNDP, of course, uh, believes that, uh, um, that we not only should talk about inclusion in development, but also inclusion in political participation in um, bringing the views of different groups and different communities with all the diversity, and that is diversity in age as well, uh, not only improves their own lives, but also strengthens uh, democratic governance and, and ultimately reduces, uh, reduces uh, inequalities. We see this in, in Chile as a, as a clear example of uh, what it means to, to leave no one behind. So thank you. Um, President Bachelet for inviting us to, to share this and to, to work together with UNICEF uh, to join forces to help your, uh, to, to support your, your leadership and your, uh, in your experience. Thank you. Thank you for your leadership as well, Jessica. Now the introduction I've been waiting all day to make, um, Aska Deline, who's the New York City Junior Ambassador, who is involved in uh, child participation uh, every day, and she's going to talk to us about her personal experience uh, as it relates to New York, but also to the Sustainable Development Goals. Aska Deline. Thank you, honorable leaders and distinguished guests, for hosting and attending this amazing event. My name is Scatling Milanes, and I am an alumnus of the New York City Junior Ambassador Program by the New York City Mayor's Office for International Affairs. I'm, an, um, I'm, sorry. I'm a Dominican-American girl, a big sister, an eighth grader worried about getting into a good high school, and a concerned global citizen. In 2030, I will be 26 years old, but I don't want to wait until then. We can start doing things now so the future could be a better place for every living thing. Last year, in the seventh grade, my classmates and I studied the Sustainable Development Goals. We focused on SDG 5, gender equality. We wanted to actually do something to change the way that people treat others differently because of their gender. So we created the Gender Defender Carnival to raise money for UNICEF, help people understand the struggles others face due to gender inequality, and inspire them to take action. Before the carnival actually started, we invited other middle schoolers to watch He Named Me Malala with us. After that, they joined us for the carnival where we use games to teach students and their families about gender equality. Our privileged paper toss game taught people about what rights everyone should have, no matter how they identify their gender. The Kahoot digital quiz game informed people about the horror of child marriage, which forces children as young as 10 or 12 years old to start families instead of going to school. Our Jeopardy game taught people about the gender wage gap and the unfair laws. After each game, we handed out educational prizes and informational pamphlets that we created for everyone. Throughout the carnival, I saw people laughing and smiling with one another, and I felt like that is what we need to make a change in the world. 
People were coming together and learning about the problems in the world that need to be fixed. But they weren't depressed or frowning. They were happy and hopeful for the future because they knew they had the power to help. The carnival ended up being a huge success. We raised over $500 for UNICEF and inspired more than 300 people to change the world. Last year, when my classmates and I did all of this, we were only 12 years old. Some of my classmates were even 11. That shows that when it comes to the SDGs, this world's youth can play a significant part. My generation understands others, and we want to accept people for who they are. We are learning how to do this better every single year. My generation also knows and cares more about climate change than those who came before us. We may not be perfect, but we are determined to change the world. And we have to, because if we disregard others and our planet, we'll repeat the past and grow up into a destructive and inhumane world. When we are young, it's easy to believe that people with money and power are the only ones who can change the world. But I've learned that isn't true. So, my fellow young people, you may be young, but start learning and start caring for the people and the environment around you. It's not right to just sit around. If you see something you don't like, do something to change it. You have power. You can change the world for the better, and you have to because your world depends on it. Thank you. Escalina confided in me before we started that she was a little bit nervous because it was her first time speaking at the UN. I think everyone would agree you have nothing to be nervous about. And we talk about these infinite capacities for activism to change the world for better. We're talking about you and when millions of children and youth start doing what you're doing, that's how I think we're going to achieve the 2030 goals and much more. So thank you for that. Um, I want to open the floor. We have a few uh, short interventions um, from, from colleagues. I want to begin with uh, the Honorable Ms. Ulla Tornes, the Minister for Development Cooperation from Denmark. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for this uh, strong voice from the youth and the young people. This gives me a lot of optimism for the future of, of, of our common global world. Thank you so much. Um, it, it is really a great honor for me uh, to, to join this very important event. And uh, Denmark is uh, strongly committed to meaningful children and youth participation. We are working on this at a national level, but I would say a few words on how we address this in terms of uh, development. Um, and, and, and this is why youth figures figures as a cross-cutting theme in Denmark's strategy for development, cooperation, and humanitarian assistance. We want to include young people in a meaningful way, not just as beneficiaries, but as partners and as leaders. Rather than create development for young people, Denmark will create sustainable development by and with young people towards 2030. With uh, 1.8 billion young people in the world, the majority is under the age of 18, youth represent the biggest resource we have for the future. To unleash this great resource, children and youth need to know their human rights. And their voices must be heard no matter where in the world the young people live. Therefore, I can only applause the Chilean initiative of I give my opinion, it is my right. <laughs> Meaningful participation of children and youth is closely interlinked with gender equality as I see it. I also just heard what a former president of Finland was saying on this. But this is two mutually reinforcing drivers of sustainable development, as I see, because only if young people can make responsible, well-informed, and healthy choices can they be agents of change of the world needs. For millions of young people around the world, the onset of adolescence brings new vulnerabilities to human rights abuses, making adolescent and youth at extremely exposed to risk concerning their sexual and reproductive health and rights. 
About 2 million girls under the age of 15 give birth every year. Complications during pregnancy and childbirth are the second cause of death of 15 to 19 years old girls globally. And every year, some 3 million girls aged 15 to 19 undergo unsafe abortions. This must stop. Because not only is it the ability to control one's fertility a right, but it is also fundamental in increasing sustainable development. We know that young girls and women who avoid unintended pregnancy are more likely to stay in school and participate as part of the workforce after they have finished school. I'm extremely committed to linking the youth and gender agenda, and I look very much forward to continue our joint journey on these matters. If children and youth are engaged meaningfully, meaningfully and they know their sexual and reproductive health and rights, we can together realize gender equality and also create sustainable development. Thank you very much. Ms. Tonis Kogan, the Deputy Minister, Ministry of Foreign Affairs for Norway. Thank you, and thank you for all the very strong statements made so far. President Bachelet, I would like to start by commending you for the way your administration has engaged children and young people in a dialogue on sustainable development. The universal character of the 2030 Agenda ties also very well with Norway's rights-based approach to development. And I'll say a few words about that in a few seconds. Politics is a matter of being ready and willing to shape a better future. For shaping a better future, it is vital that children and young people take ownership of the SDGs and understand their importance. In Norway, work is now going on to put sustainable development on the school curriculum. This is one important way of raising young people's awareness of the SDGs. Furthermore, providing good health services for all children and young people is crucial for ensuring sustainable development. Norway is therefore increasing its support for a number of global health initiatives. And for the same reason, we have, during the past four years, doubled our support for global education. We want to make sure that young people, and especially girls, are seen as meaningful partners in the work to develop their societies. The role of civil society cannot be overestimated by providing financial support for children's and youth's organizations, we empower young people and enable them to experience democracy firsthand. This, in turn, increases their engagement and makes them even more capable of giving us valuable advice. Norway includes youth delegates in its delegations to important international meetings, such as the UN General Assembly, the ECOSOC Youth Forum, the Global Partnership for Effective Development Cooperation, and the High-Level Political Forum on Sustainable Development. Norwegian policies relating to children and young people are built on the conviction that it is in our power to enable the younger generation to build inclusive and just societies for tomorrow. And the time is still on our side. Thank you. Um, Ms. Elena Chacon, the Vice President of Costa Rica. Thank you. Thank you very much. Es un gran placer, como si it is a great pleasure, as usual, to share this meeting with you and with our dear President of Chile. For a democratic country like Costa Rica, democracy can only be achieved by making sure that everybody has a voice. 150 years of democratic life, where until recently, at the end of the 90s, we found out that people 
under age were subjects and not objects of our decisions became something extraordinary for substantive change in public policies that we had towards people who were under age. We have to realize that most people in uh, living in poverty are women and their children. They are more than 80% of those who now live in extremely vulnerable situations. And we gathered the Chilean experience as an experience uh, in uh, building a democracy, a quality democracy. We congratulate that sister country that shows us the road we should travel. About eight days ago, I signed the policy for early childhood policy that we created with the assistance of Chile, and now we have universal coverage of boys and girls in our country. And we teach them that their bodies don't belong to their parents, that we cannot punish them with humiliation, with blows, because nobody learns that way. We learn through other forms of discipline. And that is how we also learn that the bodies of our adolescent girls should not be violated by men much older than them, where the reduction of adolescent pregnancy has become a fundamental goal for us in Costa Rica. We have now achieved a considerable reduction. However, we still have 500 births among child mothers, which is totally unacceptable. We also created councils of youth, of young people in each of our municipalities where they can speak out. And we have a program known as With Voice. This is Voz. In Spanish, it is vo It means voice. And we're working with the schools where there is a great incidence of bullying to teach young people that adolescents have a privileged position in preventing student bullying from being a serious problem in our countries. We have also achieved a reduction of this student exclusion. And if we don't have, invest in this human capital, especially in, by incorporating women in uh, labor, we will not achieve it. Our cooperation with United Nations agencies could not be better. We have done wonderful work with UNICEF, especially in this partnership with Chile and also with UNDP in Costa Rica, decision-making for the creation of awareness among young children that their voice is worth listening to is something we want to leave as a legacy. That's why I congratulate Chile again, and I am very glad to be able to work with UN agencies and share best practices, knowing that we are advocating for young people like you who cannot wait until 2030 to have a better present. Thank you very much. Uh, an old friend and colleague, Marta Santos Pais, the Secretary General Special Representative for Violence Against Children and a longtime champion of children and youth participation. Thank you so much, Michael. Lovely to see you. It's a great pleasure to be here, and I think we all feel so uplifted and inspired, not only by the leadership of those who are taking a lead role for, as organizers of this event, for the commitment you are expressing, but also for the very valuable initiatives that you are sharing. I, I have been privileged to join hands with President Bachelet in, in Chile in launching a number of initiatives where the voice of children was so fundamental, but also to join the Vice President of Costa Rica in promoting the protection of children from online abuse, and uh, I, I know how committed you all are. I, I wanted just to stress two or three things very quickly. One, the participation of children, we take it very seriously, and thank you for your very, very beautiful 
beautiful words. Uh, we take it seriously in the UN processes and mechanisms. And I, I just want to give two quick examples. One, uh, the Secretary General was called to elaborate a very important report on the protection of children from bullying and cyberbullying. And for us, it was fundamental to listen to the voice of children. And in fact, for that reason, we organized a beautiful consultation across Latin America and benefited from the inputs of the Euro your report uh, from UNICEF, with whom we collaborate very closely. And they open our eyes to hidden facets and contexts within which bullying and cyberbullying take place, without which the report would not be rich and with strong recommendations for member states. But secondly, and more specifically, on the 2030 agenda, you may know that in the lead up to the agenda, more than 800,000 children from all over the world participated in national, thematic, regional consultations, and they had two major priorities across regions. One, uh, to be protected from violence in all moments, at, in all contexts, by everyone. And I think we need to celebrate that we now have target 16.2 in the agenda, which calls for the elimination of all forms of violence against children. Um, secondly, they were also asking, and of course this is fundamental for participation, to be empowered through education, an education that is inclusive, that is respectful and safe. Uh, I'm saying this because children were as eager in participating in the lead up to the adoption of the agenda as they remain eager and anxious to be partners in implementation. And we need to be contagious in the leadership that is present in this room to convince all countries that without the involvement of young people, we will fail to achieve the goals that we set up as an ambition, but in addition, we will lack the inspiration and the uplifting attitude that they help us to keep. And without that, I don't think we will go as far. So I, I look forward to continue to working with all of you and celebrating many good examples of great initiatives all over the world. Thank you. So I'd like to take a couple of moments just to close. I was reminded in listening to you of an experience I had a few years ago. Um, I won't say in which country, but there was a, a minister of government very busy gentleman who came into an event. We had a number of children uh, around your age who were involved in similar process, and he came in with an entourage, and he was he was clearly angry. He had, I think it was budget negotiations in the in the parliament, and he was only scheduled to stay for a few minutes, ten minutes, fifteen minutes, to make a short speech, and uh, but the the kids went first. Um, and as he heard them speak, he uh, started to smile. He started to lighten up. He began his speech. He spoke for about 35 minutes. He stayed the entire morning. His aides were trying to get him to leave, but he just wouldn't leave. And I had the opportunity to ask him at the end, you know, I thought you weren't going to be able to stay with us. I'm really glad that you did. What, what happened? He said, you know, this was, this was the, the only meeting I had today that made me truly happy, that made me truly inspired. And it wasn't that the kids were easy. They held his feet to the fire. They told him things he didn't want to hear, but they were willing to get involved. They weren't just asking for him to solve their problems. They wanted an opportunity to participate. And I think that's what today reminded me of, that it's not just a nice thing to do. It's not just the right thing to do. It's also an effective thing to do, to involve people like you. I have a, a mentor in my life who likes to say there are people who can dream, there are people who can implement dreams, but people who can do both are few and far between. And I usually agree with him, but after today I think I need to go back and say, no, in fact, there are many people like that, they're just younger than us. <laughs> so I hope you go away with the same inspiration from today, inspired by the work of Chile, of Finland, and of course you can say uh, some last words. No, I just want to say the following, because listening to us, Catalin, you are full of you know, hope, that so many young people are fantastic as you are, Scatlin. Uh, but I also remember you, we have now lots of migrants in, in our country. And when you go to schools, children do not discriminate them as adults can. And also at schools where we have trans girls or trans boys, children also integrate them in a fantastic world. So I think we need to continue with the passion on, on all this, not only in participation, but in children's welfare, protection from violence and from so many other things. And that's why um, I think passion is the important thing that uh, represents youth. So this is just a joke that I always speak with uh, older people like me. And we said, no, not old people. 
we are people with accumulated youth because we really believe and we really have a passion for all this. So thank you so much, Ascadalin, because I, I'm sure we're, we're going to get out of here with so much inspiration. Thank you so much. Thank you. We're going to close now, and I think we were going to try and take a picture. Uh, okay. yeah. Yeah. Thank you for your participation. Bye.